Hello and welcome back to your own channel Indian Defense Analysis where we bring to you all the latest development happening in the defense sector. In the last video, we have discussed in detail about LCTS MK1A being offered to Royal Malaysian Air Force and how Tejas is the lead contender for this requirement. There was another update that has been recently shared by HL in its annual report. It has offered light combat aircraft as lead in fighter trainer lift configuration to Australian Department of Defense in response to their RFI issued in July last year. In today's video, we'll try to understand the requirement of Australian Air Force possible contenders for this RFI and then we will take an opportunity to understand the capabilities of HS lift. So let's get started. Last year in July, Australia has issued an RFI for Air 6002 Phase 1. Air 6002 Phase 1 is a $4.5 billion program between 2022 and 2033, which is to replace 33 BAE Hawk MK127 lead in fighter jet trainers. If you look into RFI, it calls for a solution which has primary role of training Royal Australian Air Force pilots and weapon systems operators in transition from pilotus PC-21 to FA-18F Super Hornet, EA-18G Growler and F-35 Lightning II platforms. A secondary role is to support the ADF either as a friendly or adversary force. The contenders for this RFI are Boeing T-7A Red Hawk platform now under development for US Air Force. KAI, which has proposed a solution based on T-50 Golden Eagle platform. Italy's Leonardo, with a solution based on its M346 Master Advanced Trainer lift aircraft and India's HAL lift. But before comparing the capabilities of these fighter jets, let's try to understand the fighter pilots training phases. And this we will be talking from the perspective of India but again holds good for most of the countries. As we all know that more you sweat in training, the less you bleed in the war. The same holds true for fighter pilots training program. And Indian Air Force pilots goes through various stages of training. The first stage is performed on basic trainer such as Pilotus PC-7, which will soon be replaced by basic trainer HAL HTT-40. The second stage is intermediate jet training and currently Indian Air Force is using HL Kiran for the intermediate jet training. And this soon is to be replaced by another indigenous platform IJT Sitara. The third stage is an advanced jet training and Indian Air Force is currently using BAE Hawk platform for advanced training. Now if you closely observe, none of these jets used in different stages have supersonic speed. However, all the operational jets have supersonic speed. Therefore, the trainees have to use operational jets for training on the supersonic speed. This reduces the overall operational life of the fighter jets. These trainer jets also lack in advanced electronics and avionics beyond visual range combat capabilities. Once the pilot completes the three stages of training and gets inducted in Air Force, they again train and practice advanced technologies of Indian Air Force fighter jets. So now you would have understood the gap in fighter jets training. Two important aspects, lack of supersonic jet and lack of advanced technologies, electronic and avionics and BBR capabilities, which ultimately affects your fighter jets in operation and reduces their operational life and increases the operational cost. Now let's talk about the four contenders for the RFI issued by Australia. Leonardo's M346 is a subsonic jet while remaining three platforms are using same American G404 engine and a supersonic jet. So M346 have less chances of getting selected. Talking about Boeing T7A Red Hawk platform, it officially entered production from Feb this year. There is not much information available about its capability and all I can see is some fancy marketing language on Boeing website. But this could be strong contender for LCL lift as it has been offered to US Air Force and aligns to its requirement. 
More than 95% of Australian Air Force fighter jets are of US origin and the platform compatibility might play a vital role here. However, I could not find much information on its technical specifications to compare with LCA lift. Talking about KAI's T-50 Golden Eagle platform, it's a decent training platform. However, in terms of capability, it's still behind Tejas and there's a dedicated video for that which can be found in the description section. In summary, there are two close competitors which are Boeing T-7A and HAS Lift. Two reasons why I think Boeing might win the deal due to strong lobbying and compatibility with US fighter jets. Now we'll take this opportunity to quickly understand HAS Lift platform. In Tejas Lift, trainee pilot will get exposed to newest technologies like helmet mounted display, beyond visual range missile and advanced AESA radar, in-flight refueling, etc. This is something which is usually experienced by trainees only after completing their training. The Indian Air Force trainees will get exposed to Tejas lift just after the third stage of training, what they used to experience after their deployment. Lift platform can also be used to mimic fighter jets like Rafale and Su-30 MKIs. It will be equipped with advanced cockpit which incorporates wide area display means data from all the different directions sensors will reflect on a single screen unlike earlier cockpits where pilot needs to look after three to four different screens to gather information. The aircraft cockpit will come up with a side stick controller instead of central controller stick just like all modern western aircraft have nowadays. The upcoming MCA will also incorporate this kind of advanced cockpit and through lift training the Indian Air Force or Navy pilots will become much more effective. This platform can be used as a trainer jet in the peacetime and can also be used in combat operations in war. Indian Air Force is planning for separate orders of two squadrons of LCA lift. This was today's update. Please let us know what is your views about these in comment section. Feel free to post your comments and suggestions about any topic related to defense sector on which you want to hear from us. With this, I would like to say goodbye and jai hind friends. Please like and subscribe our video if you have not done already. We will be soon back with more interesting and amazing development happening in defense sector.